Edge at 11 starts now. Tonight on The Edge, it's getting better, but it's not perfect yet. Delta mm -hmm. Airlines continues to deal with fallout from last week's global tech outage. One person who ended up on an extended vacation due to the chaos is our own meteorologist, Eric Kevra. Fox News' Lauren Edwards caught up with him as he finally made it home tonight. I had to drive to South Carolina to get on a flight, a, a direct flight home. It's been a long 30 hours for Fox 2 meteorologist Derek Kevra. So on vacation with the family, they're still there, but I was back to come to work, <laughs> which sorry bosses, like nothing I could do about that. Kevra says he was supposed to fly home to Detroit Wednesday afternoon, but his flight was among the many delays and cancellations Delta Airlines has been experiencing since last Friday's global computer outage. After my debacle yesterday where my flight was all kind of messed up, so I got a rental car, didn't get on the flight, got to the rental car place, they gave my rental car away. The car he reserved was gone, so he quickly made other plans. Rebooked for, for today, but I did not want to do a layover in another city because I didn't want to get stuck in another city. So I woke up in North Carolina, I drove to South Carolina, like a, an hour and a half drive South Carolina, got on a plane in South Carolina to get back home. An hour delay flight, but here I am. We made it. We're back. He landed around 745 Thursday, exhausted but grateful to be back and grateful, he says, Delta made it as easy as possible. Everybody was so nice. I mean, they've been nice the whole time. Honestly, like I give them a lot of props because with everything going on, it's easy for the feelings to come up. Uh, but it seemed like everybody was in a better, you know, pretty good mood and uh, smooth sailing. The Department of Transportation is continuing their investigation into all the disruptions, making sure that Delta is taking care of its passengers. I'm Lauren Edwards at Detroit Metro Airport on the Edge. A somber day for the Melvindale Police Department. Visitation took place today for Officer Mohammed Saeed at the Ford Performing Arts Center in Dearborn. Funeral services will be held tomorrow at the Dearborn Mosque beginning at 11 a.m. Fox 2 will stream the service live. The 26-year-old officer was killed in the line of duty over the weekend. Yeah, his suspected killer, 44-year-old Michael Lopez, appeared before a judge today to face murder charges. As to count one, it's alleged that on July 21, 2024, you did murder. Mohammed Saeed, a peace officer who was lawfully engaged in the performance of his duties. Judge Richard Page, as you heard there, choking up as he read the charges to Lopez in court. It's a tight-knit community. The 12 counts include murder of a police officer, numerous weapons charges, and possession of a controlled substance. Lopez was denied bond. How are you retrying on a felony murder if he was already acquitted of a second-degree murder? Will Michael Jackson Bolanos be retried for the murder of Jewish leader Samantha Wool? During a court hearing today, his defense attorney tried to convince a judge that the case should be dismissed. Last week, Jackson Bolanos was acquitted of second degree and first degree murder. The defense says other potential suspects were not thoroughly investigated, including Wool's ex boyfriend, who confessed to the crime during a mental health crisis. He then recanted, was cleared, and was granted immunity for his testimony during the trial. Wool's family believes police caught the right guy, and they're looking for a Jackson Bolanos conviction. We believe the evidence was overwhelmingly points to Michael Jackson Bolanos. The judge is expected to make a ruling on August 9th. Well, meantime, tonight, Detroit families coming together, keeping hope alive that the murders of their children will one day be solved. Yeah, six mothers all lost their kids to gun violence. Fox News' Dave Kinchin has more now from the balloon release for their loved ones. <laughs> Saying the names of beloved sons and daughters lost to violence in Detroit. A group of mothers gather on the city's west side to keep the unsolved murders of their kids alive and top of mind. Tabitha remembers her daughter Hayden Davis, murdered in this very area at Leisure and Finkel two years ago. Now, Hayden was a beautiful person. She was um, actually LGBTQ, transgender, and um, she was a nurse assistant. She um, jumped into the LGBT community and 
and started being a helper. She would find children that were on the street and didn't have anywhere to go because they were either abused by a parent or were not accepted yeah. by a family member, and she would find what they call safe haven homes. Tabitha was joined by Alyssa. So I lost my son, the real Rocket. AKA Bebe shot and killed on Ashton Street on the city's northwest side December 10th, 2022. He was a giver. He um, gave back to the community, especially the elders. So um, every 4th of July, he did a 4th of July picnic for the kids. And in August, he did a backpack drive. So he was a hard worker giver. Together, these moms who have endured a pain no one should ever face became relentless crusaders against violent crime through their grassroots group, Mothers Keeping Boots on the Ground. It's a great thing for me to know that I can be a help to other families that's going through what I'm going through. Everybody is not as strong to fight the good fight because my son's murder has not been caught yet. So it's a struggle every day, but it helps me to know that I'm a blessing and a help for someone else. Turning grief into action while still searching for their own peace and closure. It's really difficult to do this, you know, every year and um, it's, it's, it's really tough. It's really tough. And the mothers we spoke with say they've actually formed some bonds with the detectives who have been working tirelessly on these cases, trying to solve these homicides as well. No question about it. When mothers get involved, they're not only trying to save their children, but the city's children as well. They're really pulling double duty. Dave Kinchin on the edge. A University of Michigan athletics official arrested on child porn charges. He's since been fired by the school. Jacob Kronberg worked for U of M's women's soccer team, also was a boys junior varsity soccer coach at Pioneer High School. Investigators say Kronberg photographed underage athletes at sporting events and solicited at least one high school student for sex. Kronberg is being held without bond. While Gen Z activists are traveling across the nation to inspire young voters in swing states to vote blue. It's called the Tour to Save Democracy, and today they made a stop right here in Michigan. The group held a voters rally in Warren. Several speakers focused on issues like gun control, reproductive rights, and climate change. The Gen Z activists encouraged voters to turn red seats blue in Congress during the 2024 election. It doesn't seem like a democracy to me when the Supreme Court, the unelected Supreme Court, is able to strip women's rights away, to make Donald Trump immune from criminal prosecution. That does not seem like a democracy to me. And so that's a huge reason why we're here today, not only to flip this seat blue, but to make sure that we elect the first woman president of the United States. The group plans to visit 10 states to connect with young voters in local communities. Our political coverage does continue tonight on The Pulse as we take a closer look at America's newest high-stakes reality show, the 2024 Veep Stakes. So who will join Kamala Harris on the ticket, and what will it mean for November? Find out on The Pulse at 11.30 p.m., Detroit's only nightly political show, right after The Edge. Well, some might call today the perfect summer day, Ruth. It was really nice. Our weekend is looking pretty nice, too. Captain Rich Luderman, for all the complaints and the beefs that you get, it's nice to enjoy this, isn't it? Beautiful out there. Sun and clouds today, less humidity. That's going to be a theme for the next few days. You can see our cold front is now well off the eastern seaboard. We have high pressure parked over the Great Lakes, and that high is going to keep us dry Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Looking good from Chicago all the way up to Detroit and Traverse City. Here are the daytime highs today. 81 for us, close to 80 around Kalamazoo and Saginaw, Chicago as well. Take a look at these numbers at the airport, 81 and 64. There are the average numbers. Look at the records, 99 and 51. That sunset continues to get earlier and earlier. Now it's before 9 p.m. 62s for Jackson and Howe, 66 in Windsor. There's 59s for Flint and for Port Huron. A very light flow from the north and east, and that'll keep us on the dry side. It's the dew points, though, that are down from yesterday. Yesterday, and as a result, we have less humidity in the air. 69 in Chicago, 63 in Green Bay. There's Columbus, Ohio, 71 degrees. How about numbers across the lower 48? It's certainly warm around Dallas and Orlando. It's uh, quite warm around Denver, but for us, comfortable weather with high pressure parked over the Great Lakes. This high keeps us looking good right through the weekend. Now, eventually, into early next week, the warmth and the humidity will return along with it some storm chances. Again, you'll see it 
in the seven day comfortable tonight down to 59. Just a few clouds out there for tomorrow. Lots of sunshine, a light breeze, nice and dry for Friday. And then right there is the full seven day forecast. It's going to be a warm weekend, especially Sunday. More humidity for Monday and Tuesday with those storm chances. A full check starting at 4 a.m.